Everybody, hello, welcome. My name is Tim Erickson and I am the artistic director of the Boomerang Theater Company. And I am uh, so happy today to be talking to Jonathan Alexandratos this morning. How are you, my friend? Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm unscathed. I am, uh, I'm, I'm riding the wave of 2020 and I'm thankful it's almost over. Amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on Jonathan. Jonathan Alexandratos is a non-binary playwright, professor, and toy collector, as you can see from that amazing wall behind them. Uh, their interests include pop culture as catharsis, queer Power Rangers, and when Magic Middles might be coming back. And I had to look this up because I had, was not familiar with the Magic Middle. Oh, they're so good. They're and now so all good. I want is a Magic Middle. They're literally the best cookies ever made. So the so a brief encapsulated history of the, the Magic Middle. They were out <laughs> uh, in the early 90s, uh, which is when I was first introduced to them. Basically, they're, they're sort of shortbread-like cookies with a fudge center. That's essentially what they were. And then uh, in the thousands, Target brought them back for a, for a period. And I think Walmart did as well. Walmart brought back the actual branded Magic Middles. Target brought back their own iteration of it and called it something else. And I only got the Target ones because we don't have a Walmart really nearby here living in New York City and uh, they were just so 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 good yes so the Magic Middles podcast uh, <laughs> talk about the Magic Middles <laughs> for as long as you want awesome I love that <laughs> yeah uh, so we're recording today on Monday December 14th um, heading into the holiday season it's a rainy day here in New York City we're supposed to get snow later this week um, but we also had news of the first coronavirus vaccine uh, recipients this morning. So it's a it's a it's an unusual time to be alive for sure. For sure. Um, how are you holding up through all of this? Well, I'm doing I'm doing okay. You know, I, I, there's a lot to be thankful for. I, I am thankful that uh, I have my my health uh, and and I've had that throughout the the pandemic. And I know that a lot of people can't say that, and, and I want to recognize that. Um, you know, I live above my 90 year old grandmother, and she's been doing all right. So I'm I'm grateful for that. Um, and uh, you know, I I think that other than that, I've been I've been okay. I. Um, I feel often, um, and this is a metaphor that I use because of all of the toys, and so it's obviously something that I think about a lot. Um, when you buy uh, a really old toy, or even if it's not a really old toy, maybe it's just like from the 90s or something, and it comes in a box and you open it up and inside the box is like a, a sticker sheet where you're meant to like put the stickers onto the toy and it, it kind of makes it, you know, more... Um, show accurate or whatever so you start to do that but of course the stickers are from the 90s so they don't stick as well anymore they've kind of lost their adhesive so you're putting them on like in these exactly correct places where you're you're really happy with them and you just move on to the next sticker but then as you do the sticker you just put on starts to peel off and so you have to go back to that one and like figure out how to get it to stick again uh using either glue or trying to just like force it back into place or whatever the case may be and i feel like that I feel like I've been placing stickers pretty much where I want them to go. They just peel off and I'm kind of out of glue. And that's kind of how it's felt since March. Yeah, that's 2020 in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> and so in a year that didn't have a whole lot of creative um, outlets for a lot of people who were used to being very creative, writing, producing, seeing things, um, how has your creative life been this year? Well, there's... There's two bits of gratitude there um, that I, I certainly have. One is for classes, which uh, the one thing that the pandemic has has given me is just, it has opened up classes that I would have never been otherwise able to take. Like for instance, classes that are based in Houston that would have met in person in Houston, Texas and me not living there, I would have never been able to go. But because of the pandemic, they're just online. So they're like, oh, wherever you are, you can take this. So I took one on um, young adult novel writing. I took another one on uh, writing a pilot that was specifically for trans and non-binary people. Um, that one was based in LA, but again, it was online. So I was thrilled to take that. And both of those were hugely enriching experiences. I mean, they, they forced me to do work that I know if I were just sitting here at my computer, I would have never done because uh, I, I just, I, I, it's the sticker effect. Again, I was too busy going back to the other sticker and trying to put that on it. I'm not moving forward. Um, but the class has kept me moving forward. So I'm really grateful for, for that. Um, and the other thing is, is, you know, there were a couple of opportunities, a couple of theater companies that um, managed to sort of keep their, um, 
playwright programs afloat and I got a few of those opportunities. So uh, I was very glad about that, very um, thankful for that. Um, and, and I know, especially now, you know, that's not something that, you know, lots of theaters can necessarily do. They, they're not in positions to give playwrights $2,500 or whatever. That's not, that's totally understandable, I think, you know, in a lot of cases. Um, but I, I was grateful for those that, that uh, did. And uh, so I, I, that, that kept me motivated. I, I feel like, and this is something I have to remind myself of um, often, and maybe this is just my own sort of psychology, but um, if, if you manage to receive something in, in this environment, be, be extra grateful for it because there's just so many people that uh, did not get the thing and they're totally worthy of the thing. It has nothing to do with their own talents or anything like that. It's just that there isn't a lot of resources. So if you've got some, be grateful for it. And then obviously, you know, figure out how to share it, figure out how to, you know, use it to the, to the most good. And, and have, in, in thinking of that, has, has that sort of gratitude and awareness of gratitude sort of influenced how you write and what you're writing right now? Yeah, so it's interesting. I uh, just went back to, we had a table read of a script that I started a mission at Dittmar's uh, Turning Krasniki. And uh, we basically went back to the version of it that I had written in 2019. And we did a table read of it. And I really discovered like, wow, this is not, this does not sound at all like I would have written now. I feel like now after having gone through 2020, which is just a year since that other draft was created, um, I, I feel the need to, to be, a, to, to hit the, to hit the beats that I was trying to hit in, uh, way more, uh, I don't want to say obvious ways, but, but clearer ways. I, I feel like, um, when I was, I don't know, writing at the time in 2019, the, the writing itself felt like, oh, we could take so much time and there's, you know, maybe less urgency than there should be. And now I, I feel like I'm, I'm all about urgency and I'm all about expressing feelings and I'm all about like putting words to, to feelings and, um, and trying to make sure characters are doing that because um, I don't know, there's something about, I think the current moment that's forcing me to think about um, how, to, how to make sure characters are expressing themselves uh, effectively because I feel like I am, I, I want to express myself more effectively than ever when I'm talking to people, mainly because I'm talking to people a lot less. So like yeah. if I have someone that I'm talking to, it's like, no, 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 please don't go. Here's everything I'm thinking about. <laughs> um, and I'm so sorry because you didn't ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. And, and I, I think back to that play a lot, um, Turning Kazniki, which is a, an amazing play that Jonathan is working on. And um, hopefully it's gonna see the, the, a stage and many stages for a long time to come. It, it makes me, I've been thinking about it because it, it, it ends with a lot of people without spoiling anything. Um, it, it asks for a community to come together to achieve something. Um, and in this time when we're so all over the map and I, the idea of people coming together to collectively give something, give a gift um, is, is almost a, a radical thought in a way these days. Um, so it, yeah. it's interesting that you're talking about gratitude and about um, communication and, and the urgency of putting emotion to words and words to emotion and how that sort of comes together. Um, so it's, it's been on my mind a lot. So I'm, I'm glad that you're still working on that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it won the parody commission this year. So from oh, parody production. So I've been working on it with them and, and they've been incredibly grateful and, uh, and giving of their own time and resources. And, and I'm just so, so uh, thrilled with that. Um, we're still in the early stages of working on it now, but uh, but I'm glad that that's uh, at least in process and it'll go through 2021. And by fall of 2021, we'll see where we are with it. That's amazing. I can't wait. So yeah. in, in thinking of that, um, to, you know, in this, in where we are today, how, how, what's your process like now for working on new plays and, and any new writing, I guess. So, um, mm -hmm. You have graduate work, you have tons of experience in writing. Um, are you a morning writer or an afternoon writer? Has any of that changed with this with this year? Or I'm definitely a night writer. I always have been. I, I think there's just something about that that um, has always felt more, you know, quiet and peaceful. And and like as a kid, you know, my my parents were both uh, morning people, and so they were like up, you know, during the day, and and you know, at night they would go to sleep fairly early. And I remember like I I wanted to write about 
things that like I knew they they wouldn't approve of and I, I wanted to to write you know just like without any uh feeling like I was being kind of watched or on their timetable or whatever so I, I, I trained myself as a night writer from from a, being a kid night writer uh, that <laughs> cute theme song yeah. can we put yeah. that in um, <laughs> yeah exactly um and that has stayed with me um I have been this year I think really like stretching that Pomodoro technique a lot. <laughs> like I've been stretching the break part of it a lot. Cause like Pomodoro technique is like, you know, write for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break mm -hmm. and uh, give yourself that and then go back to it, which I think is great. Uh, it's just, you know, the, it's, it's been a problem when uh, I'll go for like 20, 25 minutes and uh, then I'll be on eBay for an hour. That's where you, uh, that's where you What could you possibly be buying on eBay? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, mostly uh, cookware. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, um, but I think like in, in sort of talking about creative process, like I think that is probably a, an important part, at least for me this year is just to when you are sitting down to write something just give yourself a, a break and 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 also don't stress too much if if the break I think does turn into something longer than a break just because I think it's a sign that you probably needed that um, obviously you know if, if you are if you know you benefit from a more regimented schedule then obviously you know give yourself that but I, I feel like we want to be kind to each other and we want to be uh, kind to ourselves and and if we find that um, you know, we have stretched out kind of the, the break time. Um, I, I think it's okay. Like the, you're not, you're not commuting to work tomorrow. So, uh, you, you got a little, little time in there to, to do something makeup wise, if you have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting, it's, you know, I find that, you know, when, when those break times come it, because everything that's happening in the world, I, I, I have to be aware of not being, getting distracted by something else, you know, whether it be eBay, whether it be, terrible news, good news, uh, you know, great British bake off, whatever it ends up being that sort of pulls me away from the thing. And then I, I know that it ultimately informs the work, but I know that it also takes the, the time away and then either you lose thought or you uh, run out of time or whatever. So being, I, I walk that fine line between being, allowing myself freedom to roam, but also making sure that I get back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Away. Exactly. I mean, I think that's such a, that's such an important point. And, and then what you said too about like, the, the news, I mean, that is, that has been a big distraction too. Like eBay definitely, but eBay was always going to be something. But like I have visited like nytimes.com more in the past few months than I ever probably have. Like I've always read it, but I, now it's like, is there an update? Has Trump done something terrible? Like, is there, you know, that's been on my mind so much, um, which, you know, damn him for that trump i i really want to be explicit about that because like what he has taken from us has been so much but on top of that just sort of our attention to other things it's like you know which he craves i mean he craves that that you know look at me nonsense uh that center of attention stuff and and by creating this uncertainty, which a lot of it is manufactured, a lot of it is, is I think, theater, and, and certainly now uh, we're at a place where his election challenges can go absolutely nowhere, um, except for other theatrics. Um, and but he's really, I think, in the in the midst of a pandemic, taken away uh, a lot of our ability to to just focus on on us which is what we should be focused on. But instead we have to be focused on him because we're all afraid that, you know, he's going to do something that, that is going to really uh, be terrible for our lives, which, you know, he's still got time to do. Yeah, it's so funny. I, I had never thought of him as being an overly theatrical president uh, until you just said <laughs> it. And now that you mentioned it, it becomes, it, 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 the metaphor seems to ring out so much that, uh, Here's a here's a person who is everything about artifice and you know thin surface you know I imagine like you know flats without walls behind them you know like and all those things that we are used to in the theater and uh, and making people believe suspend disbelief and believe for a minute that something you know an election can be overturned or uh, you know that they're he's fighting for their greater good or whatever I mean it's it's amazing right. when you 
apply that over the over the cold thing. Right. Um, but screw that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. Uh, what else do you like to have when you're when you're sitting down to write? Do you do you like write with music on? Do you put playlists together or things like that? Or do you um, how do you how do you how do you find the zone when you're getting things done? Well, it's, it depends on the kind of writing I'm trying to do. If I am uh, grading, for instance, then I definitely uh, do put on uh, Q104.3 and, and listen, <laughs> to, listen to oldies, which includes Pearl Jam now, which is really Oh, my God. Um, and uh, so I'll do that. If I'm doing my own writing, then I really benefit from from silence, uh, you know, in as much as I can. I, I even have these... Um, these noise canceling headphones because uh, wow. we live in New York City. Uh, yeah, yeah. So these are the ones they use at the airport to block out the plane <laughs> engines. And uh, I, I have those um, just because I, I like to try to hear the, the characters as much as I can. And, and yeah. that helps me to, to do that. Um, so I, I do try to keep things uh, fairly quiet. And, and of course, at night, too, that's the other benefit of, of writing at night is there's just less um, going on. I, I live in a fairly quiet area um, anyway, but uh, night it's like extra quiet, which is which is kind of nice. So uh, so I really like that. I, I don't I used to uh, <laughs> back, you know, maybe 10 years ago now I used to drink and write, you know, like I, you know, had the, the writer juice, uh, yeah, which yeah. would be like wine or whiskey or whatever, which a lot of people do. And, and I think that's fine. Um, but now I just, I have my, my Wiley Coyote mug and it's, it's all water. <laughs> that's all it is. It's just that's water awesome. Um, that's, you know, keep it hydrated. That's, yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's it. amazing. That's um, the greatest mug, I think. Oh, I love it. It's a, it's a uh, KFC uh, 90s exclusive. Uh, they, they put out a bunch of these Looney Tunes mugs at KFC that you could buy. And, and uh, so they have uh, uh, Wiley Coyote, they have Bugs Bunny. I think there's a Tweety. Um, yeah, this is from 93. Uh, the so. nose on, on Wiley Coyote is actually larger than the mug itself. It's amazing. I know. You just kind of hold it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, when you're thinking about writing and, and, and these things, if you get stuck, if you hit a wall or, or something just doesn't, you can't get through a certain thing or, or a rewrite is tricky, is there a piece of advice that you have retained that you sort of fall back on that you think about from time to time that might help you either get regrounded or push through something or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, do something else. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, seriously, like I, I, I run, I, I like to run, I, I try to go every day if, if I can, I hate running in the cold, but uh, I'll do it if I, you know, because obviously now you have to, but like stuff like that, I think is, is super great for just pausing to let something soak, you know, I think that whoever you are you, you the tools that you need are are there you have them in your brain it's it's tough because you can't see them the same way you could see a hammer or a screwdriver or something but they're there and uh just trust that about yourself and trust that like if you if you stop trying to to force it for a second and and just sort of let it let it sit there um the your, your brain is is able to to put it where it needs to to go um it might not necessarily happen in an afternoon but it'll it'll happen um and then whatever the outcome of that is um the outcome of that process might not necessarily be final meaning like you you might not get the answer that way you might just get the next step and i think that that's also important to recognize that this isn't um, like, oh, you know, I was struggling and then I just, I, I closed my eyes like a Jedi and then just poof, there it was. Like, it's probably not going to be that. It's just, you're able then to, when you come back, you can, you can continue on to whatever the next step is. And then you might have to do that process again or try something different um, to get to the next step of, of that. Um, and I, and I think you will, you will get there that way. So I think, you know, doing something else, what, and that can even include like, you know, watching an episode of TV or, or, you know, do literally just anything else that you might enjoy. Um, when you come back, you'll, you'll, I think you'll have something that always helps me um, just to, to be able to step away and come back. Nice. If people wanted to find more about your work, where should they go? Social media, your website, where, what's, where are we finding more Jonathan? More Jonathan. Um, yeah. So, 
uh, there's there's plenty more to be had. Um, so there, so I'm I'm of course on on Facebook, um, just as Jonathan Alex Strauss. You can search me on there. Um, toy underscore circus at uh, that's on Instagram. J Alexan at uh, it's a, a, a Twitter. Um, also, I'm on the New Play Exchange. So if people are on there, um, there's uh, some of my my work is is there, um, and I'd be happy to uh, read yours as well if you're reading mine, and and you know we could trade reviews or something um and that would be that would be good and and uh yeah if you reach out to me in any of those avenues uh you know we can connect and uh i don't know talk toys or playwriting or whatever the <laughs> or case both. may be or both yeah exactly so that's awesome me. well my friend thank you so much for taking the time today i appreciate it and uh be well and we'll see you soon i hope my pleasure thanks for having me this is All great right, buddy. see you